Now then, what have we got here? We have got a pylon lithium battery pack. Nominal 48 volts and it appears that it's got no output or 1.4 volts. But that means we can dig into it, which is great. So we can probably learn things from this. So let's not mess about and let's just go for it. So what have we got here? We've got an on off switch and various communications and some dip switches alarm and run and charge and a reset uh, remember that reset so we switch that on and the alarm comes on okay hopefully you can see that that alarm button is there whoops sorry anyway just over here we have the output input and there are two sets of spade connectors can we see yes we can and they're in parallel yeah can you see that 1.4 volts that's not very entertaining is it so let's just zoom out a bit. Let's take the top off. So there's two screws there and two screws at the side and the ones at the side are small and black. So quite easy to miss and then you pull this back and lift it off. I suppose at this point we really should look at the label. In the book it says it's a lithium iron phosphate battery which are good because they've got quite a long life 2.4 kilowatts 50 amp hours 48 volts charge voltage between 52 and 54 which is a bit low but never mind 2016 so it's nine years old hmm anyway moving on right here we go there's a lot of circuitry down there there's a huge amount of circuitry down there and it looks like there are four packs of batteries and each battery 10 volt 20 volt 30 volt 40 volt but it's a 48 volt battery so that's a bit weird So are there four lithium phosphate cells in each one of these packs? So uh, I think lithium phosphate when it's fully charged is 3.7 volts and when it's discharged it's uh, um, 2.7 so none of those numbers seem to add up but never mind what we seem to have let me just see if I can get rid of this front here first yeah we might be easier to see right that won't come off there's some handles that come off but the front doesn't it's pop riveted on but let's have a look down here what we've got is that black there this one here is obviously a negative because it's it's black there and then we have this connector here which is red and multi-faceted as it were 
I think we need to just zoom out a bit. Right, how are we going to do this without getting my arms in the way? We can't. Let's just unplug that. There, okay. So we've unplugged that positive and see if I can unplug this negative here. It should unplug. There we go. Right, we have the negative and the positive of this cell there. Okay, we've got 1.4 volts on the output of this unit. That's the positive. That's the negative. We've got 11.9. Okay. So that makes me think there's something wrong with the output, but that battery, that cell, is probably all right. Right, so that positive is connected to that negative. So uh, let's just keep everything unplugged at the moment. And then we've got, that should come apart now, there it goes. So these two here, yeah, are this next cell. So that's the positive and that's the negative. If you can't see that, 11.8. See, so at that, if they were all right, then we would be into 48 volts. So it looks like all of these connections well, they're bound to be. They're all in parallel. Okay. So I've got another one here. Yeah. But there's a cable tie there. So that's going to disappear. Do you know I've had I've been wanting to get into one of these units for quite a while. There. Okay, so that's a positive and that's a negative of that pack. And we've got a negative and positive. 11.7. Going to any of them, 11.7. Yep. So that one goes to that red one there. Okay. And then this last pack, the connection's right down there. So I need some needle nose to, to get to that. I think I might have got the clips undone. Mm, perhaps only one side. It's a bit tricky to get into there. There we go. Okay. So what's this one? Uh, 
Ha! Nine. There we go. Can we see that? Nine volts. So that's a little bit unspectacular. I'm wondering whether I should just try and boost that. See, the weird thing is, it's supposed to be balanced charged, right? But there are no, there are no balanced charging wires anywhere. You'd think there'd be some other connections to these cells. Ah, there are. Yeah. See this wire here? Yeah. And there are wires going to there. Okay, so that's the balance charging wires. Yeah. And that's got number three written on it, and that's got number two written on it. And there are... four wires going to it. Don't ask me what colours they are, because I haven't got a clue. Is it four wires? One, two, three, four. And the first battery pack has got one, two, five wires going to it. And the end battery pack has got four wires going to it. The plot thickens, eh? Now, do you think we ought to try and boost this pack? There's something wrong. I wonder what would happen if we put 12 volts into there. What do you reckon? We could try a small battery charger like the one that I just investigated a while ago and just stuff the wires into there. Let me go and get it. Right, I've got that battery charger. Okay. Now as I remember, oh, the amp meter wasn't working, but it is now. So we're putting some voltage into that, or some current, into that uh, cell. Alright, let's see what the voltage is. It still shows 9. Do you think if it's got four cells in each of those packs then there's one cell one lithium phosphate cell that is died it could quite be possible couldn't it and that would be that would make it 9 volts as opposed to 12 volts yeah Interesting. And that was that amp meter was really going full scale deflection, so we're going to stop that. And what have we got? We've still got nine volts, I think. We've got one cell, of the, the, I think these are four cells, and one of them is Duff. Yeah, that's my estimation. So, the only thing to do now is have a tidy up, plug everything back in, and then press the reset button and see what happens. Yeah, I could always put 48 volts into that output there at DC and see what happens also. That's probably a good idea. Right, let's have a quick tidy up. 
Right, I've got the right um, plug for this. And as I say, those two inputs are just in parallel for like input output and stuff like that. Right, we've got to be a bit careful of those, we don't want those shorting out. Okay, now I wonder if I have to uh, have it on to do the reset. Let's switch it on. Have we got everything plugged in? No, we don't. We haven't got the part of the negative plugged in. That's the negative plugged in. Got everything else plugged in. Okay, let's press reset. Switch it off. Switch it on. Alarm. Okay. So nothing's changed there. Let's see what's yeah, can we see? I don't think so. Yeah, we can. It's still 1.4 volts. So things are not happy. Let's see if we can put some voltage DC 48 volts into there from the variable power supply and see if anything changes. Switch it off. Okay, we're all familiar with my isolated DC variable power supply and down here we've got the positive connected already and that's the negative and we just need to set the voltage Right, well that's 150 volts, so that's far too much. Let's, let's just try... ...49 volts. Hopefully you can see that. 49 volts. Can you see that? Yes, you can. Okay, so... Well, nothing's happening, so we'll connect that to that, switch it on, we've still got the alarm on, we'll uh, press the reset, one, two, three, four, five, Switch it off, press the reset when it's switched off, just in case, switch it on, yeah the alarm's still there, and we've got zoom back out we have got 47.5 volts there so I'm thinking we've got a duff cell which is a bit of a blow but it's very interesting to dig into this and see okay any thoughts about this would be mighty interesting. It seems like if that one is is only nine volts, then I think we can probably safely take that apart, which would be quite interesting. Whether or not we can take it apart, it's clamped down. Um, how many wires are coming out of it? There are six wires. Yeah, there's six negatives there and six positives. 
So that doesn't make any sense as well as long, you know, any um, cells that are in here will be in series. So those wires are just to deal with the current, that's all. Um, I'm just, let me just move the camera. And down there, whether or not we can see, I think we probably can. We've got some LEDs on the board. Yep. And these, these here, they are the balance charging from the BMS, one, two, three, four. So that's the battery management board. So all very interesting, if a bit peculiar, but that's just because I'm not used to this sort of thing. Yeah. Any ideas, I'd be really appreciative. Very, very appreciative. And here's the manual. Let's just zoom down on this. This is all just very interesting stuff if you've never seen it before. Look, look, you see, under voltage, cell under voltage 2.7, over voltage 3.7. Parameter to remove protection, 3.25 and 3.5. Well, 4 times 3, say for instance, would be 12. So, but 3 times... Uh, 3.5 is 9, where is it, 9, 10, 10.5, so we were on 11.8 on some of those other cells, so it's just, yeah, under discharging 42, over charging 54, doesn't really work with a lead acid, which would be um, 47 to 58 so it's almost like you would want one more cell but if this is four four cells per pack yeah, then this is, would be four fours of 16 this would be a 16 S lithium iron phosphate where does it say it? It says somewhere. I can't remember now. Here we are. Lithium iron phosphate. Yep. So, let me know what you think. Cheers for now.